Welcome to this explainer video where we'll compare different video frame rates to help you decide what's the best frame rate for your CCTV system. There are two key questions to answer when deciding on a suitable frame rate. Firstly, what video frame rate is sufficient for the purpose of my camera? And, secondly, how much capacity do I have on my system? Or how much do I want to spend on this? Here, you need to think about the fact that faster frame rates will require more storage space, more bandwidth, and more throughput on your server and viewing PC. This question also goes hand in hand with what image resolution, or image size, you are looking to run. Running a high frame rate in combination with a high image resolution will use a significant amount of resource and can become very costly, so it is important to make careful considerations. In this video we will only look at video frame rates, to help you get this part of the equation right. As a rule of thumb, for slow movement in a scene, a lower frame rate tends to be sufficient. And for fast movement in a scene, a faster frame rate will be required. To give you some perspective, people walking or browsing in a store is generally considered slow movement, whilst cars on a road would be considered fast movement. Let's look what different video frame rates look like in practice. On screen, we are displaying the same video in four different frame rates, 1, 8, 12 and 30 frames per second. For comparison, we are also showing the estimated bandwidth and storage requirements with each of the four videos. Please note that these estimates are intended to provide general guidance and may vary based on a variety of factors, such as scene complexity. Notice how running a camera at 30 versus 12 frames per second more than doubles the bandwidth and storage requirements. Yet visually, the difference between the two is not so significant in this example. While 30 frames per second video is perceivably smoother and would allow for better frame by frame investigation when, say, a car would drive at greater speed it comes at a significant cost in terms of storage and server resources. The high frame rate demands more processing power from the server to manage the increased data throughput, and results in much larger file sizes which require greater storage capacity. Next, let's look at the difference between 8 and 12 frames per second. Note that the perceivable difference between these two frame rates is quite small, but there is a significant, further reduction in bandwidth and storage requirements, helping to keep resource requirements and the associated hardware costs under control. However, it cannot be emphasized enough, each camera should be assessed on its specific purpose and application. For most CCTV applications where typical in-scene movement is slow, say 3 to 5 miles per hour, 8 frames per second tends to be more than sufficient. This is also why video management systems, such as Milestone, are often set to 8 frames per second by default. In scenarios involving faster movement, such as vehicles or machinery, higher frame rates of 12, 15, 20 or 30 frames per second may be required to capture the detail and fluidity needed for more effective monitoring and investigation. Lastly, let's take a look at the 1 frame per second video feed stream. 1 frame per second is often used for continuous recording in combination with a higher frame rate taking over when the system is triggered by activity or a predetermined rule. Using this setup, the 1 frame per second recordings are ideal for proving something didn't happen, whilst the higher frame rate used for the event recordings would provide the detail required for incident investigations. So in summary, 8 frames per second is often a good starting point as it is suitable enough for most standard CCTV applications. It offers a good balance between usability and cost efficiency in most cases. Decrease or increase the frame rate in accordance with the specific purpose of your camera application. Remembering that faster in-scene movement may require a higher frame rate to meet your requirements but that this will increase resource and storage demands as well as the associated costs. We'd also like to advise against the all-too-common practice of setting the same video frame rate for all your cameras, particularly in larger camera estates where the purpose of different cameras can vary significantly and a one-size-fits-all approach often leads to either compromised performance or a costly over-specification. We hope you found this helpful. If you need more information, give us a call to speak to one of our experts. And if you enjoyed our video, we would appreciate a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to our channel for more videos just like these. Thanks, and we hope to see you on the next one.